everyone, as we begin our lesson for this day, let us invoke the presence of the Lord as we say in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Most blessed Lord, send the grace of your Holy Spirit on me to strengthen me that I may learn well the subject I am about to study and by it become a better person for your glory, the comfort of my family, and for the benefit of your church and the world. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello, good day everyone. Welcome to our lesson for this quarter two. To begin with, may we have first our one minute warm up and please be guided on the following steps on this next slide. microscopy and we have the following uh, objective or goals for this day at the end of this session you should be able to identify the parts of uh, the microscope and uh, also their functions and also focus specimens using the compound microscope and last one enumerate ways on how to take care of uh, our microscope and Continue viewing this video. So we have uh, the history of uh, microscope on the next slide. While the telescope has made it possible for us to view the cosmos, the microscope has allowed us to see the smallest components of all living things. Magnifying glasses are mentioned in the writings of Roman philosophers during the first century AD. But it wasn't until the 17th century that Galileo, the father of modern physics and astronomy, formulated the principle of lenses and focusing. Robert Hooke built the first usable British compound microscope in 1665. It was a light microscope with two converging lens systems, the objective and the eyepiece. Hooke observed that tissues were constructed of many tiny individual building blocks. In 1665, he had discovered and named the cell. Hooke was actually viewing cork, dead plant cells. The first person to witness a live cell under a microscope was Anton van Leeuwenhoek. Around 1670, Van Leeuwenhoek developed a method of grinding very thin glass lenses, just a millimeter in diameter, and yet they could magnify by several hundred times. These single lens microscopes were far superior to the early compound instruments. Mounted in a brass plate, these lenses could use transmitted light to image objects in a drop of water on the end of a metal pin. A screw was used to move the pin and focus the specimen. Van Leeuwenhoek was the first person to see and describe bacteria and yeast cells, sperm and blood cells, and witness the circulation of blood through capillaries. Light microscopes are still used today, but in 1931, German scientists Max Noll and Ernst Rusker invented the electron microscope. 
Instead of light, this microscope employs a focused beam of electrons to image the specimen and is capable of far greater magnification and resolution. The electron microscope can magnify up to one million times, making it possible to view objects as small as the diameter of an atom. These powerful microscopes have one major drawback. Living specimens are destroyed by the high radiation of the electron beam. And so scientists must continue to rely on traditional light microscopes to examine living cells. Now you have the uh, background on the development of our microscope. Now we will define what is the formal definition for microscope. A microscope is a precision instrument and the number one tool being used by our biologists in conducting biological researches and in studying the objects or organisms or parts of organisms that are visible or is slightly visible to our naked eye. Let's further deepen our understanding or our knowledge on the historical development of a microscope. The first one uses microscope we have Zacharias Jensen and his brother Hans wherein they uses a compound microscope which uses two lenses and that's his picture or image and this is the example of microscope that they use there is the part which is eyepiece and the objective next then afterwards, Anton van Leeuwenhoek discovered also or made a simple microscope that is one lens, negative 270x, wherein it uses to observe the first bacteria, yeast, and red blood cells. There he is. And this is the simple microscope that he used. There are parts. There are lens, sample holder, focus knob, and focus knob rather, and also sample translator. And the years pass by, we have this one, who is his Robert Hook, wherein he improved the compound microscope. So that is one of the uh, instrument that he used or he uh, discovered or improved so the other one we have uh, the parts which is the oil lamp and water flash and the other microscope that he used there are a lot of body parts it has uh, ip is a barrel focusing screw objective and also a specimen holder and it is called also as hook microscope Robert Hooke discovered a tiny compartments in a thin slides of a cork, wherein he called the compartments as cells. So that is the development of, or historical development of microscope. Now we will deal on the different types of microscope. So there are a lot of, uh, several types of micro microscope exist nowadays. But... In the beginning, we call it as a simple microscope wherein it has a lens that make it possible for the eye to focus on a very small object and it is merely a double convex lens. So these are examples of a simple microscope wherein you can also see a magnifying glass power and it is used only for a botanical studies. Next is, uh, afterwards, there is uh, the presence already of the compound microscope. So this is example of a compound microscope wherein it is commonly used by our dear biologists and researchers. This type of microscope anyway consists of two optical elements. We have the objective lens and the ocular lens. So this is an example of a compound microscope. Well, next is we have the phase contrast microscope. So 
So that is the image or picture of a phase contrast microscope. This is when living materials are difficult to see under a simple microscope, biology sustain them with dyes, but these often kill the living materials. And in 1932, a Dutch physicist named Fritz Cernig invented a microscope that made it easier to see living things without staining them. And the last one, we have the electron microscope. For electron microscope, so this is the example of electron microscope. So for the transmission electron microscope, and we have also type another type, we have a scanning electron microscope. So for transmission electron microscope, that is 1,000 times to 1 million times. So the, it magnifies the specimen after this one. 1,000 times up until 1 million times. And for a scanning electron microscope, it magnifies the specimen up to 500,000 times or x. Now we will go on our next goal, the parts of the compound light microscope. So the parts of the CLM are categorized into three. The first one is illuminating parts. So these parts are the parts that provide light. So light is important for the object or a specimen to be seen. So the light may come from two sources. We have the natural sources and also the reflected sunlight and artificial source or even the light bulb. The other one part is we have the magnifying parts. This is usually uh, our parts that enlarge the object or the specimen. And for the other one, we have mechanical parts are the parts of the microscope that is usually support, adjust, connect, and move the other part. Anyway, you can see the parts of a uh, compound microscope on uh, your textbook. Page seven. So these are the basic parts of a compound microscope. We have IEP's coarse adjustment knob and also fine adjustment knob and also inclination joint body tool, revolving nose piece, objective condenser and mirror base. So the functions of the following you can actually browse your textbook on page 74. And this are the other parts for the other types of a compound light microscope or other examples of a compound light microscope. So for illuminating parts, we have the following mirror, diaphragm, ocular or eyepiece and the objective. For the magnifying glass or parts, we have the ocular lens and the object lenses. And for the mechanical part, we have the existing base, arm, body tube, stage, stage clips, adjustment crews, and also the revolving nose piece. So those are the parts or basic parts of a compound microscope. For now, we will focus on the parts so, and also the function of each part. So we have the head, so that is the part of the compound light microscope, the head part, and we have for the eyepiece lens, and it is also known as ocular or the first point of magnification that is usually 10 times or 15 times. And next we have barrel. For barrel, it is also known as the body tube, and it connects the eyepiece lens to the objective lens. Next, we have uh, the arm. For arm, raises the objective lenses above the uh, stage and also used for carrying the uh, microscope. Next part, we have the revolving nose piece. For revolving nose piece, it is a rotating uh, turret that houses the object lenses. And we have also the objective lens. The second point of uh, Magnification usually for four times 
10 times, 40 times, and 100 times. Standard color coding all red, yellow, blue, and gray. Next part is what we call a stage. The stage is the platform where the slide is placed for viewing. The slide is attached to the stage, stage by slide clips and it is movable in four directions by using the stage control. We have this left, right, and up and down. And we have the coarse and fine focus knobs. For this part, this is the coarse focus that brings the specimen into the focus. Where in fine focus, fine tunes the focus and increases the detail of the specimen. Next, we have the existing lamp. This is the light source for the microscope or the brightness can be also adjusted with dimmer. So that is the part where you can adjust the brightness into dim. Next part is we have the existing condenser. So this gathers and focuses the light from the illuminator on to the specimen. We have also the diaphragm that is rotating this under the stage. So you can look at this example wherein it varies the intensity of light that is projected upwards into the slide. Next is we have the aperture that is the hole in the middle of the stage. And we have also existing base, the bottom of the microscope used for the support. So it supports the whole parts of the microscope that is the base. So that is the summarized parts of the microscope. The continuation of this video will show us the proper handling of a microscope. the microscope with both hands, one holding the arm and one under the base. Walk, don't run when carrying the microscope. Check that the bench is clean and dry. Place the microscope down gently towards the centre of the bench to reduce the risk of knocking it off. Be careful not to bang or drop the microscope. This can damage the microscope, particularly the lenses. Avoid touching the lenses because this will make them dirty and it will make your images blurry. If you think the lenses need cleaning, ask your teacher to show you how. Unwind the cord and plug the microscope into the power point. Find the on-off switch. It's usually at the back or side of the base. Every time you use the microscope, always follow the low to high rule. Start by selecting the lowest power objective lens and later zoom in by working your way up. The lowest power objective lens is the smallest objective lens and is usually marked with a 4. Here's the diaphragm. Opening it lets more light in and closing it will make the image darker. Use the lever to adjust it so that a medium amount of light passes through the hole in the stage. You can readjust the light later to improve the image. Remember, the brightest light doesn't necessarily give the best image. Here's a slide. Take a close look at it and find the specimen. Put the slide on the stage so the specimen is right in the centre of the hole in the stage where the light comes through. Then clamp the slide in place. Look from the side while you turn the larger coarse focus knob to move the stage up to its highest position, close to, but not touching, the objective lens. It's important to look from the side so you don't risk smashing the slide or the objective lens by going too far. Now you can look through the eyepiece and slowly turn the coarse focus knob in the opposite direction to focus on the specimen. If you turn the knob too quickly, you might miss the moment when the specimen's in focus. Once the specimen is roughly in focus, you can use the smaller fine focus knob to get a sharp image. Before zooming in to the next objective lens, make sure that the specimen is exactly in the centre of the field of view. Many microscopes have a small needle you can see which shows you exactly where to move a specimen so it's in the centre. This will help you to zoom in on the part you want to see. Then follow the low to high rule and move to the next highest objective lens, 10. Your specimen should be nearly in focus and you should only need to adjust with the fine focus knob. 
You might also notice that the image gets darker. If it does, you can open the diaphragm to let a bit more light through. Do not move the stage down before you change to the next objective lens because you'll be out of focus and will have to start all over again. Again, center the specimen and you're ready to move to the highest power objective lens, 40. When you've finished using the microscope, remove the slide and rotate the lowest power lens in place. Turn off the microscope and unplug it from the power source. Check that the stage is clean and dry. Wipe it with a cloth if necessary. Wrap up the cord and carefully return the microscope as you found it, carrying it with both hands. Return pre-prepared slides to your teacher. Your teacher will tell you whether any slides you made need to be washed or placed in special waste containers. Do not place glass slides in the classroom rubbish bin, even if they are broken. Let's have a tech point or some trivia or analysis based on the discussed topic on microscopy. So who did the first observation of bacteria yes, and red blood cells? The answer is Anton van Leeuwenhoek. Next, you need to recall what do we call the parts of the microscope that are used to provide light? The answer is, any guess? That is illuminating parts. The other one, another checkpoint or trivia. It is used to locate and enlarge the specimen 10 times. The answer is the LPO or lower or low power objective. Next checkpoint. It connects the lenses of the objects and the ocular. We have barrel or body tube. Next, it supports the entire weight of the microscope. Any guess? The answer is based. Very good. And for your practice, you answer the science probe on page 82. And uh, same as with the cross word puzzle that is HTML file posted in the LMS. And uh, the key points of the lesson that microscope is a precision instrument used to view objects or organisms or parts of organisms that are visible to the naked eye. And microscope may be classified as simple and compound and many more. And for emitting parts, these parts are those that provide light to the specimen. And for magnifying parts are those that are used to enlarge the image of the specimen. And we have also the mechanical parts that is or those are that those are parts that support or adjust connect and move the following parts and the last one discussed was the proper techniques and procedures must be employed in using the microscope or in viewing a specimen through the microscope and we have this environmental principle existing Everything is connected to everything else. In connection of this, you have to always do your best in whatever field you are in. Whether it is big or small, maybe your task, the fact is you always contribute to the success and achievement of the bigger community you are in. Just make sure you do your part, then you certainly have a significant share in the success of everyone. Take note also that we have the power to make change by searching for new knowledge. In our quest to achieve progress, we must always bear in mind to take care of our life. Everything that we do affects our society. No matter how small or big our actions are, they still contribute to the society. So think right, act right, so that everything will be alright. And that concludes our day for 
this week lesson may we have now the closing prayer as we say in the name of the father the son the holy spirit amen lord thank you for giving us the opportunity to learn and the capacity to understand let our knowledge be of service not only for the attainment of our goals but also for the benefit of others amen in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit